scientists of Reddit. What are some scary scientific discoveries that most of the public is unaware of? Super gonorrhea is resistant to the vast majority of strong antibiotics, including fluoroquinolones and macrolides. N. Gonorrhea is mutating all the time to resist antibiotic effects. There have been multiple reports of super gonorrhea in Australia, England, etc. You probably have to frick to get it, so most of us are safe. Many people may be silent carriers for mad cow disease and won't know for another decade or so. Mad cow disease from the 1980s 1990s was due to cows being fed the remains of other animals. People then ate their beef and consumed prions, a protein that can destroy the human brain. It's thought that many people still might carry prions but won't know until they start experiencing the symptoms of Creutzfeldt Jacob disease or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, which might be 10-50 years after consuming the contaminated meat. It has a long incubation period. You can also contract the prions from blood transfusions, which is why so many UK citizens from that time period still aren't allowed to donate blood. Once the symptoms begin, cognitive impairment, memory loss, hallucinations, etc, you usually die within months. There is no cure or treatment. My spouse knew a guy who died of Creutzfeldt Jacob disease last year. He was in his early 60s and had just retired. One day, his eye began twitching. Not the eyelid, the eye itself, making it difficult for him to see well. Within three weeks, he was in a vegetative state. He died a short time later. The replication crisis in psychology, though the problem occurs in many other fields, too. Many studies aren't publishing sufficient information by which to conduct a replication study. Many studies play fast and loose with statistical analysis. Many times you're getting obvious cases of p-hacking or harking. Hypothesis after results known, which are both big freaking no-nos for reputable science. And then all the research that gets repeated only to find null results over and over again. And none of it gets published because of the null results. Research is incredibly inefficient. The emphasis placed on publishing, at least within the academy, can incentivize quantity over quality. Not much more immediately horrifying than antibiotic resistant bacteria. And the mad cow disease one. Prions are so crazy. It's just a malformed protein. Yet, somehow it teaches other protein to fold themselves improperly. The human body has no defense against it. Truly terrifying. And they're generally only detectable through an autopsy of the brain which means you gotta be dead first. Abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's basically an aneurysm that happens in the big artery in the middle of the abdomen. It's fine and is usually asymptomatic but when it ruptures, a patient loses all their blood within a short period of time. The scary part is that it usually is diagnosed by accident due to annual checkups for something else. Anyone can have the disease, but especially people with Marfan syndrome, smoking, hypertensive, and hyperlipidemic. I actually know two people personally who have died from that within the last 10 years. Known link between untreated hearing loss and cognitive decline that is, dementia, ETA, keyword is untreated. If you previously had normal hearing and it started slipping, please see an ent and audiologist. Hearing aids have come down in cost and improved in function aesthetics even in the last 10 years. If you are a veteran in the US, the VA will normally cover your hearing aids. If you have had hearing loss since childhood, you are not one of the ones I'm worried about. You have either learned sign language to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss and or you have learned how to use hearing aids cochlear implants to keep you from being isolated due to your hearing loss. The link is really between communication and cognition, not the physical ability to hear. It's just that in people who previously had normal hearing, if they don't do anything it will impair their communication and in turn affect their cognition. I should be worried about this but reading the rest of the thread I welcome the sweet embrace of the void. First one. The vast overuse of antibiotics has led to superbugs that are antibiotic resistant. At the same time, the diversity of microbes within the human has drastically decreased in first world countries. This leads to a correlated rise in allergies and gastrointestinal diseases. As we use more antibiotics and antibacterial viral products, then biodiversity of microbes decrease, 
and superbugs have a much easier pathway of invading the body. With a very biodiverse microbiome, your resident microbes will try to fight off these infections much easier. We need to focus on helping bacteria, not killing all of it. All hail the bacteriophage. Not a scientist but I will still take the time to mention something that scares the crap out of me I only found about a month ago, and I don't think a lot of people are aware of but probably should be. Back in 1946-58, the US tested 60 nuclear weapons on the Marshall Islands and buried the nuclear leftover waste and soil in a 30 featuring deep cavern sealing it with a concrete dome. The dome is cracking and now it's leaking into the ocean and surprise surprise it's not fixing itself and the people responsible are essentially ignoring it or saying it is not their problem. Imagine Chernobyl but bigger and in the ocean. For your information the dome is only a portion of the radiation. Truth is, that whole island chain is badly contaminated on a scale that we can't fix. Man, humans are some dumb m. We are doomed by our combination of naivete and bravado. About 8 years ago, a friend of mine was working on the technology to allow you to feel things through your smartphone. Not just the emotion of anger that you feel every day through Twitter, but the textures of fabrics of clothing you are thinking about buying. He moved to Boston and we lost touch but I think about his job every single week. Ants are attracted to CM and when you nut on the kitchen floor, the ants will prefer the nut over the other stuff, making it perfect for keeping ants away from your food. You know, I'm somewhat of a scientist myself. I like that you said when as if it were already predetermined that at some point in my life I will nut on the kitchen floor. It would have been very advantageous if the serious tag were included. Source, my professor on concrete cement structures. I'm from Malaga, Spain. It's not a terribly seismic active place. However, every hundred years or so there's kind of a big earthquake according to historical records. We didn't have it so far although it would be about time. During the last hundred years we've been building taller buildings than ever but the law requirements for buildings weren't up to date in order to resist that sort of big earthquake. Basically there's a huge batch of buildings waiting to collapse under this earthquake and the issue is mostly ignored. It's one of those low risk scenarios with a huge bill to fix them associated to them. Fortunately new buildings are supposed to be prepared for anything you throw at them. Pineapples have an enzyme that digests protein. So whenever you eat a pineapple, it is eating you back. It's the reason why you have to boil pineapple before embedding it in jello. The bromelain in the pineapple keeps the gelatin from setting. With the way we're going coral reefs won't be gone in like 15-20 years. They'll be completely gone in 5 which is extremely detrimental to the sea as the reefs are one of the most biodiverse places we have of the planet. Not my area of science but important nonetheless. The star beetle jersey in Orion may be about to go supernova. We've known it's going to go supernova soon. That's astronomy soon as in could be tomorrow or in 200 years. Beetle jersey is a variable star. So it gets brighter or dimmer all the time, but it just got dimmer than we've ever seen it before. No one's 100% what's going on. If Betelgeuse does go supernova, all of our satellites and stuff will be fine. The solar wind will protect us. The main problem is we'll have no night for a while, maybe weeks, so it'll really throw animals off. The Higgs boson, which was hypothesized decades ago was discovered via the Large Hadron Collider. Its real life discovery proved that it's what gives mass to everything. But there is a non-zero chance that a Higgs boson can drop to a lower energy state. And because of the law of entropy, it's a preferred state to decay to a lower energy state if possible. The influence of a low energy state boson would kick off a chain reaction causing other Higgs bosons to drop to a lower energy state. The problem with this is that if a Higgs boson drops to a lower energy state then it can't give mass to things anymore. Which is universal implications when mass doesn't have mass anymore. It's theorized that the infinitesimal small probability of this occurring could lead to a circumstance where the universe as we know it disappears. Essentially it would occur like an absolute void progressing through the universe. Low energy state Higgs bosons infecting any other Higgs boson they come across. Maybe the closest thing to a Thanos snap. But it causes everything to disappear in the universe but only at the speed of light rather than instantaneously. 
The fact that you can edit genes from the comfort of your home. The protocols are out there. The literature is too. The materials are easy to obtain. Asia has a lot of unregulated production of anything biochemistry related. It's where I get my phytohormones. This means that a kid with some free time, roughly 5000100000 dollars and a heap of motivation could potentially create something world threatening. It might not work on the first hundred tries, and you can try a hundred times within a week, but once it does, there's no stopping it. I know for a fact that not a single country in the world has developed a working protocol for a shutdown or containment. Roughly a year ago I informed someone working in the anti-terror division about this. I told that I modified brewer's yeast by cold shocking it in a suspension with wild type yeast DNA to make some new craft beers. And that anyone could do that. Not just to yeast, but to a whole lot of microorganisms. I was asked to come and give a lecture about this. So that the team would have a clue about how biochemical warfare could potentially be prevented contained. But I never heard from them again. What's scary is that this is not a discovery. This is out there. This is happening on a large scale to do good. And people justify it because of that. It's being used to clean up oil spills. To produce medicines like insulin. Even to capture CO2 from the air and convert it to bioavailable molecules. Putting vitamin A in rice. But it takes just one rotten apple to spoil the world. Bill Gates has spoken out about this. And I think more people in the world should. We can't stop this from happening. But we can have the right protocols in place to contain it. As soon as I think about what's needed to contain something like that. And to stop people from fleeing contained sites. Well, you've seen the movies. The thing is, where do people go once they're infected? Right? To the hospital, where there's a bunch of people with already weakened immune systems. Where do most antibiotic resistant bacteria get their resistance? Right? In hospitals. Through. Horizontal. Gene transfers. A hospital sized petri dish. Second one. Our immune system is very amazing at what it does. But it is also super dangerous. B cells and T cells have the potential of being very self reactive. They can slip past cells that are supposed to kill self-reactive immune cells and they can cause autoimmunity. To help combat autoimmunity in super important parts of the body eyes, genitalia, brain, etc. Then these areas become immune privileged. Basically immune cells can't go in those areas at all. One of the most terrifying things is infections using those immune privilege sites to their advantage. In Ebola survivors, the virus can hide in those sites and reinfect the patient later on. In one case, Ebola was in the eye of a survivor and caused his eye to change color. In other cases, Ebola was transferred as an STD because it was hiding in the genitalia of a survivor who transferred to the partner in the physical relationship. I'd say the super volcano under Yellowstone that could literally go off today and wipe out millions. It's been due to erupt for a while now and it saw the last time it erupted, it brought on the ice age. The last ice age was too recent to be the Yellowstone super volcano. It's also been due to erupt for over 500,000 years. Offhand, I think we're okay. That there's an entire planet in our solar system that we can't find. The only piece of evidence to its existence is that certain celestial bodies orbits and movements and stuff are behaving erratic and the logical explanation is that there's another planet out there. If I remember correctly it's also around the size of Neptune. And way out past Pluto if I recall correctly, if it exists at all. Bacteria that can survive space and re-entry into the atmosphere. Aliens are real bro. But they came from Earth so they're not aliens. The climate change thing is simultaneously overstated and understated. Life on Earth will not end in 10 years no credible scientist ever claimed this, but we are in the midst of a serious loss in biodiversity and biomass, and those are not things that can be restored quickly or easily. Climate changes but it is not supposed to change this much this quickly, and it's such a complicated system. Humanity's relationship with global ecology is fundamentally unsustainable and will undergo radical alterations in the next century whether we intend it to or not. That's the threat we face. No more and no less. STDs such as herpes which can't be cured can be contracted with skin contact as well. Nothing physical. And, most interesting, one out of six have it. 
and people don't know. Thirdly, neonatal herpes can get your just born child killed. So, take good care and get checkups. There's evidence of an entire planet in our solar system that we can't find. I'd love to read more on this if you can give a source. It is possible to revive a dead pig brain. Somewhere in the world they put two eyes to talk to one another. Before they knew it, the two eyes started talking to one another in a better more efficient language but since the developers didn't know what they were talking about, they had to turn them off. I have a few. Vacuum decay. Do you know how batteries die? How a cold beverage will heat over time or how everything you put into motion will eventually stop? That's because of entropy. Matter doesn't like to have a lot of energy. It always wants to reach the lowest possible state of energy. You know, the bottom of the graph. The universe is doing that right now, everywhere. There's this hypothesis that our current lowest possible state might not be real, just sitting close to a bump that'll end in an even lower state, and particles could be just some quantum tunneling away from reaching it. But why is this important? Because if that ever happens it'd create a cascade effect moving through space that would destroy everything it touches, potentially replacing it with new laws of physics, because the constants would change, and we wouldn't know until it's too late. Strange matter, with an effect not unlike vacuum decay, this time caused by compression of particles in the core of neutron stars to the point of fusing regular quarks, up, down, etc, into strange quarks, that some physicists hypothesize could be more stable than regular quarks, again, creates a cascade turning everything it touches into strange matter for which we don't yet know the properties of, supernovae and gamma ray bursts, any supernova closer than 1000 light years could damage Earth's atmosphere. Gamma ray bursts are even faster and more dangerous. It's estimated that there are more than 3 million stars within 1000 light years of the solar system. The human impact on the climate, it's already past the point of no return. We probably won't get extinct from this, at least, but the next decades will be harsh for all of our planet's biomes. Biologists are calling it the 6th mass extinction or Anthropocene extinction, you know, because we're the ones causing it, as the current rate of species vanishing is already 100 to 1000 times the normal. This number is only set to increase as the climate becomes more extreme. Space is really, really big. It's hard to find stuff. Stellar black holes are really small and can't be detected if they are not interacting with anything. Some models suggest that there could be tens of thousands of black holes hiding in our galaxy. Blue ice. It's the name given to the frozen sewage material that has leaked mid-flight from commercial aircraft lavatory waste systems. If it falls it can damage roofs or even you. So yeah, you can be walking on the street one moment and in the next die, impaled by frozen pee. Do you watch that German channel on YouTube that starts with a cur and ends in a T? We have the technology available to fully switch to non-petroleum and non-natural gas energy sources but not the political or social momentum. Aortic ruptures. The main artery from your heart runs down through your body, supplying blood to both your femoral arteries. Well, in certain circumstances, it's entirely possible to just shear the aorta in two. Think cutting a hose completely through with scissors as water is running through it. I've seen this happen once, in a road traffic collision. A guy driving hit a tree, coming to a complete instant stop, dissecting his aorta and bleeding out. Estimates from last time I looked for survival are 1 2 minutes at best. If this happens, you are dead. And to put this into perspective, you build up enough energy for this to happen when you are near or surpass 30 miles per hour when driving. Vehicles are crazy dangerous. Be careful out there people. It's easy to make a virus that is near 100% lethal, or to make one that has near 100% chance of rendering its victim infertile. The night sky is just an illusion. When you look up at a star, that star might be 80 million light years away, meaning the light from that star took 80 million years to reach Earth, which means you're looking at a star that is from 80 million years ago and isn't actually there today. Which means the night sky is a night sky from millions of years ago. What would the sky look like today? There is a theory that if we can invent something to go faster than the speed of light millions of light years away in a few days, weeks or months, you'd be able to look back at Earth and see dinosaurs walking the planet. Time travel is real we just don't have the advanced technology to do it. 
A gamma ray that could have wiped out all life on Earth and we would never know that it's coming towards us until it's too late. I ain't a scientist but, bacteriophages, the future of medicine, probably. The fact that we would still have enough oxygen even if all the trees on land were cut down. Most of the planet's oxygen comes from phytoplankton that lives in the water surface. Not saying that we don't need trees to survive. The land would have be a barren wasteland borderline desert if there would be no trees to hold the soil. Also trees are also actively removing contaminants on the water before it even reaches our drinking water sources. Earth has a finite amount of helium, and we are starting to run out. At some point, it will need to be rationed. MRI machines need liquid helium to cool its superconducting magnets. So what will probably happen is many hospitals will no longer be able to offer an MRI. And knowing the system in the US, this means hospitals in poor areas first. A lot of people are going to die or suffer from undiagnosed diseases disorders. And to think we waste it on floating garbage. Without any fanfare climate change is sadistically more serious than we all think. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.